Hello everyone, welcome back to Reflections. Today, I would like to ask you if you are delaying what God has for you. So I'm reading through Genesis again, and I'm uh, reading about Abraham, and I just want to like go through a little section here um, in, in the beginning of his story, and I just want to like talk about it and then reflect on it, and, and we'll go from there. So in uh, Genesis 12, um, it starts in the beginning. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And then it says in verse 4, So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. <laughs> so here's where here's where the trouble starts, right? If you caught the beginning of that, it says, get away, get out of the country and away from thy kindred. So Lot is his nephew. And he's like, okay, God, but I'm going to take a lot with me, right? So then it goes on in chapter 12, and the next thing that you see is, I'm not going to read it all because there's like, I'm going to bounce around a little bit. But him and Sarah then go and he tells Pharaoh that it's his sister and that whole thing happens and all that strife. And then right after that, he and he and Lot get into some strife too because they're herdmen or not getting along and all this stuff. And then... Finally, at the end of, uh, or in the middle of chapter 13, he says, all right, listen, like, you go here, and I'll go here. You just pick where you want to go, and you go away so that we're not, you know, fighting and having all this drama anymore. So then Lot decides to go to Sodom, because that's a great idea, right? We all know that was a great idea. <laughs> and then after that, it picks up in, um, in chapter 13. After Lot moves, it says, And the Lord said unto Abraham, after Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it to thee. So what I see here and what you may see is God originally made a promise to Abraham, right? He said he was going to bless his seed and all the great nations would come from him and all these things. And Abraham's like, Okay, cool. I'm going to kind of do what you're asking a little bit, but, like, I'm going to maybe tweak it. And God's like, okay, I'm going to sit back here and just see what happens. So immediately, everything between then and here is negative, right? Like, all the stuff. He screws up. He lies. Well, first he took a lot. Then he lies about his wife. And then there's conflict, right? So really, he's not having a great time while he's kind of not really listening to God. Then when Lot is gone, when he's like, okay, like, you know, go. Immediately after that, what does God do? God reaffirms to him, like, okay, like, now can we get back to work? Now, now can we talk about the promise that I made you? Now can we talk about what you're supposed to do, right? So I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking, like, in our life, how, how often do we do that? Like, God's promises don't change, right? They're all in here. He tells us things. He might give us our own personal promises. And a lot of us have said like, oh, you know, I know I'm called to this or I'm called to that or whatever. God gives us these things. And then we like sit on them or we tweak them or we're like, eh, I'll give you like 95%, but I'm going to hold on to the five because I'm nervous or I don't really trust you. Or maybe I'll lie a couple times because I don't trust that you can help me in this scenario. Um, and how many times do we like just delay the good stuff that God has for us? Like his promise, his promise never changed, right? He didn't say, oh, you know what, Abraham, you screwed up. 
you screwed up a lot, you didn't listen to me, you were clearly disobedient, and I'm just going to take it all away, you're punished. If you keep reading, he actually does it more. <laughs> he keeps screwing up. Abraham keeps screwing up. He lies again about his wife. He, he does a few things wrong. At no point does God yank the promise. At no point is God like, you know what, I'm, I'm just, you screwed up too many times. He continues to have his back. Because Abraham always goes back, right? Like, we have a choice when that stuff happens. Like, he could have just kept going, and it could have just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And maybe God's patience would have run out at some point with Abraham, and maybe he would have screwed up too many times, and maybe he would have turned completely away from God, and he would have hardened his own heart, and then it would have went differently. God would have got done what God needed to do. He would have just chose different people, maybe. But are we missing out or putting ourselves in strife because we're just not really fully listening or believing the promises? I think we do that a lot. Like, I wonder how much time, like, I've thought about things in my life. Like, man, maybe I would have been here, like, 10 years ago if, like, I didn't do that and I didn't do that and I didn't do that. And like you could say, like, it's all God's timing and things work out the way they're supposed to. And it's true because there is value in that process. Like, Abraham does learn through his processes, right? He learns, okay, like, I have to trust God. Like, yes, see, God is still here. God is still there. He doesn't turn around. So there is value in all of that. But I just wonder, and I, I'm just maybe saying reflect on that. Think about your own life and think, like, is there... Is there something even right now? So that's really what you should worry about is right now because you can't go back in time and change it. You know, there was no value in Abraham sitting at the end saying, you know, I really shouldn't have lied to Pharaoh about Sarah. Like, he didn't do that. Think about right now and what you're going through right now in your life. And is there something that God has called you to do? Is there a promise that God has made to you? Um... Is there just something in there that you know you're not really listening to? Um, I would urge you to just do it. Just do it and see what happens. Because I'm also guessing that you're not fully happy right now, if that's the case. Because God kind of creates the system, I think, so that um, we are fully happy and blessed and, and really content when we're doing what he wants, <laughs> not when we're doing what we want. Right? That's where all the pain and suffering comes from, is, is from our will, not his. So maybe just just do it. Maybe just stop thinking, stop doubting, stop holding back, and just say, you know what, God, I trust you, and just see what happens. Because in my, in my uh, past, in my history, in my experience, when I do crazy stuff and I just trust God and it looks really dumb, he completely confirms exactly what he says he promised in the beginning and he takes care of it and it's awesome every single time so reflect on that guys um pray about it look in your life and say you know am i am i doing all those little things that i know i should be doing and maybe you got to have a little chat with god and just suck it up and do it so please share this video because i think we're all in this place at least once twice or 50 times in our life so uh, let's get off pause and, and live for God. I love you guys, and God loves you. Have a great week.